As the spread offense continues to, well, spread throughout all levels of football, teams are slowly ridding themselves of the tight end position. Instead, teams are choosing to space out the defense with more and more wide receivers. Was that the only way to run a spread? After all, weren't tight ends useful at some point in time? Mike Norvell's offense almost exclusively runs sets with a tight end. He often even uses two, but why would he bother? When the whole world seems to be devaluing the tight end, why is his scheme so reliant on it? The short answer is that he uses them to get a numbers advantage. The longer answer is a bit more interesting. Before we get into film, let's first look at what a tight end adds on paper. In a basic spread formation without a tight end, the offense has five men on the line of scrimmage. This gives them six possible locations to run the ball. These areas between and around the down linemen are called gaps, and they're traditionally lettered instead of numbered, but we're going to stick with numbers for today. In order for a defense to adequately defend the run, they need to have one guy that is responsible for each gap. So for five down linemen, they need six guys for their run fits. So what happens when you bring in a tight end? As you can see, we added another blocker at the line of scrimmage, but more importantly, we added another gap for the defense to defend. This means an additional defender for the defense who has to be concerned with stopping the run. Let's bring in the defense. The two most popular defenses in college football today are the 4-2-5 and the 3-4 Oki, or tight. That sounds like a lot, but it's explained in the name. The first number refers to the number of defensive linemen. The second number refers to linebackers. And the third, if there is one, refers to the secondary, or the players concerned primarily with defending the pass. While there are a lot of differences between these two defenses, something interesting happens when you look at them versus an offense that has a tight end. They still have slightly different positioning, but their gap responsibilities begin to resemble one another. So let's just look at the 3-4 for now. Pop quiz. In this image, how many gaps the defense have to fill? I hope you said 7, because that's the right answer. A little trick, it's always one more than the people on the line for the offense. But now, the defense has a problem. They only have six players to fill those seven gaps. So if you're a defensive coordinator, what do you do? You have to bring in another player to fill the gaps, and these two guys are your best options. But these guys are instrumental in defending the pass, so you have to give them two roles. They have to defend their passing zone and defend their running gap. Needless to say, this is easier said than done. Let's look at what happens when they totally neglect their run responsibilities, which happens more than you might expect. Instead of trying to figure out who fits in which gap, let's first look at the box to see if the defense even has enough people to defend the run. Well, as you can see, the offense has six down linemen, which makes seven gaps. The defense only has six men in the box, so either this guy or this guy need to come down and run support. To me, it looks like this guy probably has this outside gap, also called contain, that he doesn't cover. Luckily for Memphis, that's exactly where they go. You can get the same effect with an H-back. This is essentially just a tight end that is off the line of scrimmage. You can think of him having a gap that isn't there yet. Iowa State doesn't seem prepared in this play as they only have five men to defend seven gaps and Memphis takes advantage. Even if all gaps are covered, some players now might have different run responsibilities than they're used to. Here this linebacker is slow to come set the edge, which is normally the job of this defensive end, and the Memphis running back is able to get the corner. Here the defense has all the gaps covered, but there's some tricks to getting around that for the offense. Memphis leaves a man unblocked on the back side and essentially shifts all the gaps over one spot giving them a free gap to run through. All right, back to the whiteboard. What if the offense were to bring in another tight end? Sounds crazy, right? Well, now the defense has to adjust by devoting two extra men to the running game. Defenses really don't like doing this, and it shows. Here the defense has eight gaps to defend with only seven players. It looks like either this safety or this corner has to be responsible for this gap. Since neither comes up and fills the hole, 
Memphis pulls off a nice little run. Another cool thing they can do with two tight ends is to pull both of them from one side of the line to the other. Since tight ends tend to be smaller and more athletic than linemen, they are ideal candidates for pulling. In this play, Memphis pulls two tight ends and a guard to get three extra players at the point of attack. What if the defense fully commits to stopping the run by loading the box? Now that the box is fully loaded, this is where the RPO comes in handy. This linebacker here can either stay with his run responsibilities or cover the tight end streaking down the field, but he can't do both. Here he hesitates just long enough for the running back to find a hole. Now let's say the defense really locks down the run. To be honest, this is the best case scenario for the offense. Now there's a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside, and in college football, the advantage usually goes to the offense in those situations. The thing about football is on paper, the offense should always win. There's no way to design a defense that can stop all of the possibilities of an offense. But for some reason, teams don't score every drive. The defense does win a lot of times. What happens? If the offense can't block one defender with one lineman, then you might need to devote two linemen to him. In years past, teams have been able to beat Florida State using fewer defenders than gaps because the gaps don't matter if the defender can blow through the blocker. If things are going to change in Tallahassee, they have to start from the big men up front.